Hello and welcome back to the Altrix Weekly Challenge for me and Big Null. This is challenge number 86 and we're creating a macro that generates past dates. So this is a little bit of a challenge uh, for me. I'm not great on macros and because I just don't, don't use them very much and uh, so it's good so I can learn a bit more about how they work. And so let's, uh, it's fairly straightforward to generate Create a macro that generates a table of dates and the day of the week, given the starting date to, to today. Uh, users should be able to select the start date. Add a section that allows the macro users to whether or not to include weekends. And then create a duplicate macro that's encrypted so that no changes can be made. Okay, so let's have a look at the start file. Now I've actually had a quick look at this. If we um, have a look uh, at the output, um, I'm guessing this is an encrypted in the bay, macro generate rows to date solution encrypted. So we want to, be able to open that and see what's in it. Um, but you can see here it's got a calendar for selection and also what looks like a checkbox, a yeah, checkbox to skip the weekends. Okay, so no input for this one. So I'm thinking, well, we're going to have to build it out. So I'm going to build it out on a uh, macro as you build out on another canvas and then you save them and then bring them back in. One thing I checked, looked at before was this. If you go to interface tools and look at the macros, the checkbox one, uh, you've got these open examples. Uh, so that gives you in, in the tool itself some examples about how, how checkboxes work. So I've been having a look at that, check them out yourself. Uh, well worth it but let's let's start with this and let's first of all you know see if we can uh, work out how to generate these this, this workflow which we then turn into a macro so I think first of all we need a text input so we need something to it and now I'm thinking we'll get uh, people to input it so if I met, met also in this interface I had a look at the date format and it, you know when it chooses it but when it puts it in I think it puts it in a date format so let's start with something simple so we do 2020-01-01 okay so it's kind of like the we call this date right and then that that will give us the but it's still a string so we need to think but we need to generate rows I'm hoping it will recognize it we can change it to we bring this we change it to date and we call it um, date uh, I don't know time okay so uh, what we want to then do is take obviously the first initial expression is the is the date field and we want to, I wonder if we can do it with the same field. Let's just have a look. Can we update the existing field? I don't think so. I think we have to create a new one because it needs to be date type. Okay, so the expression we want is the date type is equal to today. Yep, yeah, so we use in here. So in row count, we want the uh, date is less or not not date uh, it's the new field we want uh, is less or equal to today I think is what we want date time today date time today okay okay and then the loop we want to take so let's uh, just take that so it, it is uh, the new field of date time plus one it doesn't work that way with dates so you can't just do take time one what we got to do is look at the date time functions and it's add date time add the top one and then the particular field we want is date time the increment we want is one and we want days okay so that should you run that generate yeah there we go so we have um, date time for date time is the one for all that so we've got this date so all the days that we've had since the date that I 
set on the year, first of the year. Okay, so let's then think about what we do next. So we want to work out what is, uh, we go back here, that we now have effectively, you know, it runs through every day. Now we need to work out what is, because if we look in here, oh, I've not run this, let's run this. Uh, yeah, so we've got the week, the day of the week in here. So we need to work out what the day of the week is. So we go back to the canvas. Now we want to turn this date into a string so we can then split the, so it's this format here and we, no, the date, we want the day, day monthly and year is what we want. So we can extract the day from it and we want to, we want to take date time, select the date time field to convert uh, and the new name of it will be date time out. Okay. And that will give us Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, etc., etc. So we can now use a simple uh, text split. You keep the comma. We just want the first field out. Okay. And then that gives us here this date time out one. So let's just clean this up a bit. The select. And we can. We don't need the first date field. We've got date time. We'll probably rename that date now. Um, and then we don't need. Let's click on here. We don't need this date time out. Uh, but we do need the day of the week. So day of the week. And then uh, we don't need this one at the end. Okay, so that will again give us just the two fields that we want um, in the same format as the two fields over here yeah, in the original macro, the output mode macro. Okay, so that's fundamentally the breakdown. But now we need to work out how do we you know, create an interface that filters out the weekdays. So first of all, we need an interface that allows us to choose the dates. So let's, then maybe we start to that first. So this, this is it. Uh, text to display. Uh, choose a date. And we'll, uh, yeah, choose a date. I don't know what the, what's the, what was the text that they put around it on this one. Uh, select date. Okay. date okay um, and then uh, we need an action I think from that okay and then that should update that field with the selected date okay so if we put that in um, we won't see an output so but we that, that should do that um, now we need to do this checkbox here now what I'm thinking is that we need to work out if this day of the week is a weekend and then we have some way of filtering out the weekends from a checkbox. Now a checkbox just gives you a true or false setup. So I think we need another input, text input, another uh, action between the two. So we want it to default and update the thing. So the text input we're going to put in here is weekend. And we're going to start off with false, I think, because it's Boolean. Checkbox. And we want to call this, what do they call it in this macro here? Skip the weekends. Okay. Skip the week. Ends. Okay, so that will then give us something to work with. We then have to convert it to a Boolean, I believe, for us to be able to. Oh, it's already a Boolean, so maybe you don't. Let's leave that then. And then um, bring in a formula so we can create our. So we add one and we'll call it week end, end question mark. 
what I'm doing here is creating an if statement that if it is true then it's weekend else something else and I'll tell you why that is because I, before I do that let's work this out so we can work out if something is a weekend or not um, so let's uh, create another one we can call this one weekend as well and we want an if statement Is a conditional if statement okay so if uh, day of the week equals Saturday or day of the week equals Sunday uh, then week oh, week end else and we'll just do it as uh, false uh, as well as weekday I call it. Uh, do we want to week day right okay so that'll give us this weekend or weekday right and then in here we want to say uh, if so another conditional so if uh, weekend equals one so it's checked then we want to put in week end so we might find a match on it else now we don't want to do it weekday because it will then pull in all the weekdays we just want to exclude the have the ability to exclude it so we actually want to call it something else so I'm thinking false we call it false that it's not going to match and the reason why I'm doing it that way is that I'm going to use a join to do the filter so if I bring this in here and then bring that in there that will create a and do it on the weekend now we don't need this anymore and we don't need the boolean okay so what that will do is Anything that comes through the left side will, actually it doesn't matter about the right side, uh, what we don't need is this weekend thing. Anything coming through the, oh, we'll keep it just in case, but um, if I run this, you may see, there's nothing going through that. Everything has gone through the other side and we don't have because oh, it's just using this weekday is it using no weekday here because it's not it's false so it thinks it's yeah it's basically not matching on anything it thinks it's everything right yeah because it's just for some reason yeah so it's oh is it resorted it Yeah, we all the weekends at the bottom. Okay, it's resorted it, so we need to resort it. So they're all going through on the left side because this is false, right? That's fine. So let's um, then take, oh, let's just sort this then so we've got it back into the right uh, order off the left side. So we want to take the uh, date and make it ascending. Okay. So that's given us it in weekday and weekend and then we want just want we want to get rid of this we can do that here pretty sure we can just take that off actually we'll run that okay yeah so that's given us Saturday Sunday oh it's still in there what's happened there uh, it's that one I actually wanted to click right right that's are. Oh, because it's in this side, isn't it? So it'll just bring for everything. Oh, we can just um, remove it with a select. It's coming through the left side, so it's always going to go through regardless, whatever's there. When you uncheck something in the join, it only affects the join, not on the left or right. Everything still flows through, so you have to get rid of it afterwards. Okay. So, uh, so that's got that now gone um, and gives us the output so now we can turn this into a macro 
I believe, and see how we go. So if we create an output, well, there's no input, but we need an output because uh, we, don't, we don't have it, we're generating everything ourselves in our side business. And all you do is just save this, save as, I'm going to save it as, call it date, let's just call it the date macro. Um, and then if I go back here, uh, right click, insert, and then right at the bottom we've got macro, and then there's a date one. And it's inserted that. Let's just bring in a browse tool. And you can see that we've got skip the weekend and the date. So let's choose a different date. Let's go with the length of December and skip the weekend and run that and see what we get. So 48. Have a look in here and no weekend. Let's go back, keep the weekends this time. We'll choose a different date. Let's choose uh, November, run that. We've got 86 there uh, and we've got the Saturdays. So there you go. That's created the macro. Now the final bit of this was, can we create a duplicate macro that's encrypted so that no changes can be made? Okay, so I, I had to look this up. I didn't know, I don't know how you do that uh, before, having to look how you do that. So I just looked it up. Um, again, uh, I, just, I just Googled what it, how you do it. Um, and so if you go into Options, Advanced Options, and then Encrypt Workflow. I've just read this. I haven't actually tried this before, so I'm assuming that's where it goes. We can put it, put it there. Okay, so if we uh, save that, Encrypted Workflow workflow okay successfully now let's uh, I guess if we go here browse Maybe we do it that way ah, ah there we go okay <laughs> seems straightforward enough okay so this is now if you look on that a date and get encrypted uh, and then bring it in and then we can let's set the date for this to be 23rd of Feb Oh, that's the future. That's not going to work. Yeah, zero lows. <laughs> um, 4th of Feb. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and then we've got Saturday, Sunday because I didn't check it. And on this one, we've got Saturday, Sunday. If we check this one. Yep, and run it. There you go. Normal macro, encrypted macro. Finds the date of the past. Thank you very much for watching. See you again next time.